I have a very good friend of mine um, who is part of the family um, that uh, runs the Nordum Corporation and basically has established the Siegfried Space Week. And they asked me to come and tell my story. And over the many years that I've been here, I've had the chance to speak to a lot of young adults in, in the Tulsa region. And this is just another extension of it. And I'm very excited to be able to continue the tradition. I'm very honored to be here. And what's important to me too, on my second flight, John Harrington, um, who is America's first Native American uh, to fly in space, was my crewmate. And so to be here where he's from and to be a part of his story as well is very important to me. And a lot of this is also brought together by the Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance. So there's many different stakeholders that come together to allow us to tell our story to the youth. And I think it's an important story, so I'm very excited to be here. I, I think there's two things. First of all, I'm passing on what someone did to me when I was young. Right, the guidance we all, as we go through our lives, have those people that pop up and direct us a little bit left to right to go the right direction. And so I, I hope that I have the opportunity to do that in my talks. And maybe I had the chance here to really encourage some of these young adults to, to go into the STEM field or, and, and just to be good, you know, good citizens as they, as they grow older. So that part's important to me. The next thing that's important is to convey that story that um, America is, the, is preeminent in its space technology. And I want us to stay there because it's so interwoven into everything that we do. And people come here to study and learn and work because of our space technologies. And I want to make sure it stays that way. So I'm actually, I think, I'm on third career. So there was the military one, of which NASA was part of that. And then I had the opportunity to be one of those 10,000 people behind the astronauts that get work done. So I worked for a company that supported the flights. And that gave me a whole new perspective. And, and it was one that I was glad to do because I'd had my opportunity and now I was helping others. And now I actually uh, work with my wife. We have a small engineering company and we're supporting the DOD and we still do uh, avionics and, and flight innovative uh, work. And so I'm still doing some test flying and still have my hands in developing new technologies. And so I feel very, very fortunate. And so I try and convey that to the young adults that there is a long career and path ahead of them to stay involved. I tried to tell the youth that were here today that in 50 years, airplanes had really progressed very far. And in 50 to 60 years that we've been involved in human space flight, we're still very not much further where we were back in the 1960s, even though there was the Lunar Space Program. So the technologies are there, but we still have so much to learn. So low Earth orbit, we're starting to basically not master, but understand and, and use it to our advantage. But the flights back to the moon and then eventually to Mars, there's still very much to learn. And I think it's gonna be a longer path than what people might imagine. There's the movies such as The Martian, there's all of the ones that talk about space flight and, and we seem to have mastered it, but we haven't. There's a, there's a long way to go and lots to do.